We must stop all of this arrogance and sectarianism among some of the community members that we have who only have one way of doing things. One way. There's only one way. My way or the highway. And that's it. My way or the highway. No. We have a religion that is deeply nuanced. It has a broad usul. There are multiple interpretations for many of the rulings of Islam. And beware of arrogating to yourself the role that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to His self alone. Allah knows His religion. Most of the ishtihadat of our great scholars were done by signing their fatwas with Wallahu a'lam, Wallahu wa rasuluhu a'lam, Allah knows best. In other words, this is the best I can do, but Allah knows best. We have, we have to stop all of this madness where somebody says, Ya akhi, haram. You can't, that's haram. Is that mujma' alayh? Is it agreed upon? Do you, have you studied these books? Have you studied the usul? Because there are some things that the ulama say, there's a difference of opinion. Some of the ulama differ on certain things. And you will have this. You will have opinions of ulama that say, the halal is clear, the haram is clear. And between them are gray areas. Many people don't know them. Only the ulama are expertise in these. And we're talking about the giant ulama, not people who have studied and done their Nizami course or done their graduate from uh, four years at a Islamic uh, university. No, some of the teachers I studied with studied for 30 years at the hands of their teachers. 30 years. And they have lifelong learners. Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya, one of the greatest living scholars today, he studied until he was, uh, he studied from the time he was about four years old until the time he was 21, every day, five to six days a week, 10, 15 hours a day, pure study with his father and the other teachers. He memorized 10 qiraat of Quran. He memorized all of the, the dawaween of the pre-Islamic Arabs. He learned the, all of these uh, texts in Arabic grammar and in, uh, learned the alfiyah, the ihmirar, another thousand lines after the alfiyah. He studied the Kafiyah. He studied the uh, Mukhtasar Khalil, memorized the whole mashhur of the Madhab of Imam Malik. Wallahi, when you see him with his piety and the way he addresses these issues, Allahu A'lam. I've heard him many times say, Allah knows best. This is the best I can do. And I've, I've asked him about a hadith. He said, it's not in the six collections. This is a level. And then we have people saying, who is Shaykh Abdullah bin Bayya? Who is he? Who are these, these dwarfs, really? Who are, with no offense to physical dwarfs. I'm talking about intellectual dwarfs. Physical dwarfs, that's not a problem. You know, that's the way Allah created them. But an intellectual dwarf, you created yourself. Allah gave you the ability to expand your mind. If your mind is not expanded, you are to blame. But knowledge comes with patience. That's what we need. We need a bit of unity. We don't need, you know, we've got too many guys with chips on their shoulder. It's true. You know, we've got too many guys who think that they are only on the hook. But that is the truth. Because you know why? Because this is the worst form. This is the worst form of haughtiness. This is the worst form of pride. That when you give your pride a religious paradigm, a religious justification, so you think you can speak condescendingly to other people. You think that you have a God-given right to look down on other people because you're on the hook and they're on the back. If you really are concerned, then work on the brother or the sister. Be nice. Be nice to the person. And this is why, you know, especially at this age, uh, you know, at the university age, we have too many people of that disposition who cause you know, disunity. Nobody in 1400 years, the Ahl Sunnah have certain parameters. Yeah, the parameters have been written by the ulama. But nobody in 1400 years has the entire ummah agreed on one way. Never. Never even time the Sahaba. So why are you shoving your opinion down other people's throats and causing disunity and discord in the Muslim Ummah. And this is something you know we need to understand because often we are the greatest cause of disunity.
people have different approaches to us as long as they're within the confines of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that's fine. But we should not make us people, you know, who look at people in a condescending way or, or look down on people. We need a bit of unity here. The Muslim Ummah needs unity. And if you don't realize it now, then Wallahi, I don't know when you're going to realize it. I don't know when you're going to realize it.